Hello guys and welcome to this uh, kind of tutorial and kind of challenge. Uh, I have done some uh, processor auto crafting with the Seas Factory Manager and uh, I had a specific idea when it's early game you don't have an AE network or anything like that and uh, basically what you need to get started with AE2 before you have everything up and running. And Steve's Factory Manager can do that. I saw design once and I tried to make a different version of it. And it, it works perfectly fine. So if I grab some silicon, what do I have? Oh, I have plenty of those. I should actually take a few diamonds and just throw everything in. Something like that. Okay, I just threw it in this chest and the system should automatically craft everything for me. And I have two inscribers. They have no accelerators, so I know that with three accelerators you can make one inscriber very fast, so you probably don't need to, but it's a method that I want to try and see if it can be quite efficient anyway. So what I do is that I just throw some diamonds and silicon and make sure we have redstone or it will just stand still and wait. And this program will automatically check for ingredients throw it to the correct spots and pull back and everything and except for the fact that I couldn't really pull back pull back my presses in a good way that was the only part I didn't get to work well so that makes this slightly slower than it should be but I can just demonstrate diamond every six seconds I will make this check so it took the engineering press and now we're doing diamonds oh we're doing the uh, what's it called engineering circuits and as soon as they are finished they will end up down here so that's kind of the the idea is that they should be able to run in parallel and uh, we can throw in some silicon as well and when this diamond is finished, it will go down here again, and we should have these exchanged to silicon presses within six, six seconds. Yeah, there we have those placed as well. And they will just be pulled back. And now if I remove the silicon and we are done, then they will both be pulled back. So that's how it works. and. Well, it's quite convenient. I could hook this up to auto crafting later, just have an interface to put ingredients into this chest and uh, then just have this system running and pull them back. Now, it's not a very fun program to write. And you can see we have 44 commands to do this and I will go through everything while this runs. Uh, the tutorial is well, the description is done. Now we get into the tricky part and how to explain. I will try to explain it in a good way. It's not that advanced, but if you have never touched Steve's factory manager before, this can be quite tricky to follow. First, the setup we have two inscribers on top of each other. They are powered from one side and the power is transmitted through it. And then we have inventory cable down here, just so the inventory manager can reach the uh, the bottom inscriber and a chest on top so i i'm doing this in three steps so we have the first step here this is what i call pull product we trigger this every second and the condition is to check both inscribers check the east side that's the the east side is this side it depends on how you rotate in your world, but in this world, how I placed it, this is the east side. So we 
check the east side for any of these items. If these items are in any slot, finished processors or just circuits or silicon, then we will input, uh, this is the same condition actually, input all these items into the network and output them to the chest. Any slot will do and say all items one more time. So this part is not doing anything, it's just collecting all the products from the, that action was made by the this part. Then we can go through this. We have all these four are identical except for the ingredients. So first silicon. This is a group by the way. All these four are groups and we, they have the same type of output as well. So we have trigger every six seconds. This is the... yeah, I will come to that quick, shortly. Uh, we have the condition to check the chest, any side, check for any silicon. If we have silicon in the chest, it means that we want to do silicon presses, okay? Then input from the chest, the same thing, import the silicon and the silicon press. And we output to the top inscriber, it's this one, it has Y53 and this is Y52, so this is top one. Target the upside, place the inscriber in the top side. And the top side is this one, this lot. And also target the, the same inscriber, target the west side, and place the silicon there. And the west side is this one. So we have press silicon and it will work. And now we have the, when it has done this, it will, uh, it's finished with a trigger. Then it will start a new interval, a new, uh, new count for six seconds. And that's enough for us to finish the press. If it's finished, then this condition will be false. We have no more silicon in the chest, so we have a false result. Then we target the inscriber again, target the top side or the upside, and we pull the silicon press out. And then I have a node here. That means that we will output the output from this input uh, ends up in a node. It's set to output node, and then we can go back. So we left it at the input, the press, take it into the flow control, and just output the press into the chest, any side, any press. So all these presses are the same. And now all these four look exactly the same. Everyone will output the, or <laughs> input, output. It won't output until down here, but it will input this false condition from uh, when we have no more gold or silicon or pure certus or diamonds. We will input that item, that press from the inscriber. This time it's a logic press, since this is the gold. We have the logic press and then it's just node. And then we have the node and output the press into the chest again. All right. So all these four, identical. You can see it again. Trigger. Check for pure quartz, P uh, pull the pure certus quartz and the calculation press, output the press to the upside in the inscriber and the certus into the west side of the inscriber. And if we don't have any more uh, pure certus quartz in the chest, then we will collect the press and pull it 
put the chest and the press back in the chest. So those four things, we create silicon, logic, circuit, calculation circuit, engineering circuit. And the final step is to craft the processors. So we have, this one is done every second. No need to, no problems here. Check for any of these things. If we have any redstone, any silicon, or any circuits. Input, chest, any side, input all these items, all you can find, output to the lower inscriber. Now note that the bottom uh, inscriber <laughs> will only do the finished uh, processors. So that's why I can output all of these items to the same inscriber. So we have the bottom inscriber, the top side, I will place the circuits in the, still the same inscriber. In the bottom side, I insert silicon. And in the last slot, we need redstone, so same inscriber. West side, redstone. And west side in the bottom means this one. So now everything is just working. So I put, put one gold in here and within six seconds, it pulls the proper logic press. Put here, they are pulled out. The logic circuit ends up in here and the processor is being pulled out, redstone and silicon refilled, and we have the processor here in the chest again. Easy. Um, I, it, I think it can be done more simply, more simple. Uh, but I, at first I tried to, uh, how, how can I explain this? This part. When we don't have, when the, we have a false condition, I wanted to do this every second, so, uh, but I couldn't because it always pulled out. If I have this set to one second, and this is the silicon. Well, that's a bad example. I don't have any more silicon on me. Let's do this with gold. Now, if I put any gold in here, the inscriber logic press will be pulled back before it's finished. See? It's not finished. So that's that's one flaw. We have to have that six seconds. Now we'll also remember to change this back as well. Trigger this silicon for six seconds as well. The, the process, once it has started, is uh, fast, as fast as it can be, with, well, without accelerators, of course. Uh, but the first six seconds are, uh, the, in, what can I say, the, the process will be slow to start. After that, it will be fast. If you put some, up, you know, some accelerator cards in these ones, especially in the top one, then you can shrink this time to something much lower. Um, yeah, that's basically it. If you have any ideas how to make this more efficient or faster without, <laughs> without adding more inscribers or accelerators, then, uh, then tell me and uh, feel free to share your, your solutions. Overall, this is a quite stable, I tried it a little, just throwing in random stuff and it seems to be working. Um, might be bugs, I don't know, haven't seen them so far. So um, yeah, please uh, tell me what you think about this and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Okay, take care, bye bye.